Here we have four sets of data. Set A, B, C, and D. These are four different samples. Uh, and we ask these samples of people a simple question. How likely are you to purchase softened toilet paper if it's priced slightly at a slight premium to standard toilet paper? So here we have a surveyor trying to figure out if people are willing to pay more for softened toilet paper and what might drive that willingness to pay. So we have these four different samples, sample A, B, C, and D. So let's first begin by looking at just samples A and B. We're just going to look at that. Now, typical thing we'll do with this kind of data, it's a 1 to 5 scale. So, you know, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where 1 was encoded to me highly unlikely, 2 was unlikely, 3 was neither likely nor unlikely, 4 was somewhat unlikely somewhat likely, and five was highly likely. So we have these uh, four different, five different ways for groups to answer. And as I said, we're just going to look at sample A, sample A, and sample B to begin with. So let's go ahead and just create a very simple little plot of sample A and sample B. That'll be equal the count if this range is, oops, is a one comma and there we have it. There's my one. Close parenthesis. I'm going to be copying and pasting, so I want to insert my little parameters in the right place. Three people said highly unlikely, six said unlikely, seven said neither likely or unlikely. Very symmetric. Let's look at group B. There's group B. Looks a little different. Now we can, of course, plot this as we've done many times before. I'm going to go ahead and do that quickly. There we have it. Select data and series. A, there's group A, there's group B, oops, that's my axis labels, there we go, and I'm going to add group B as well, okay, okay, so there, notice I'm leaving my legend, this is because I have two different groups. A and B have slightly different answers. See, clearly A answered this slightly more than B, and B answered this slightly more than A, so they don't have the exact same answers. Uh, but do you think that these differences between A and B is due to some great underlying difference or due to some randomness? Well, take a look at the plot. There's not a big difference. It's probably due to randomness. A few other things we can do for A and B is find the average. Find the averages for A and B equals, because I have raw data, I can just simply take the average response for group A and repeat for group B. And we see that these are slightly different. Not greatly different, but group A is slightly less than group B in terms of its average. All good and done. Nice visual representation of the data. The key issue, though, is looking at the uh, p-value of the t-test. So here's my p-value of t-test, of the t-test. This is two samples of numerical data. And I'm going to get that by typing in the word t-test. And you see it says this function uh, is going to return the p-value, the probability associated with the student's t-test. Open. It says choose the array, so here's array 1, that's sample A. Here's array 2, that's sample B. And we also have to choose tails. I'm going to choose a two-tailed distribution because I have no a priori expectations. So I'm just going to type in 2 and type. We have paired, 
homoscedastic and heteroscedastic, and as I said, pretty much choose homoscedastic, which you see here is a type 2. Close parenthesis, see what I get. I got 0.735. We'll just make that into a couple of decimal points. And we need a chosen alpha. And our chosen alpha will be 5%. Now, is 0.7574 greater than or less than 5%? Uh, my P value, value is greater than my chosen alpha. True. So what does that mean? That means that the probability the differences are due to random sample error is greater than my significance level. Okay? So the probability that any differences is due to random sampling error is greater than my chosen significance level. The probability that any differences are due to random sample error is greater than my chosen significance level. So we have that. I'll just put little stars here to denote the key points I'm trying to make. Copy, paste. Let's make another key point. So what do we do if it's probably due to random sampling error? Do we reject or accept the null hypothesis? Well, we accept the null hypothesis. What does that mean? The differences, we are declaring that the differences are due to random sample error. What does that also imply? It implies that sample A and sample B are from the same population. And all of this is good and fun. We're talking like nice little statisticians here. We've talked about the null hypothesis. We talked about random sampling errors. We talked about uh, sample A and sample B being from the some, same population. We could also say the difference is statistically ins insignificant. Okay. We'll make this a little bit smaller. And finally, what's the key point? We have to be able to talk like we're talking to normal executives. So I'm going to make one more little bullet point for how you would say this to an executive, because that's who we hope to uh, serve or be one day. And the executive isn't going to want to read through the differences statistically significant or I've accepted or rejected the null hypothesis. They want to know what you learned. And what did you learn? You learned that the two averages are roughly the same. Okay, so what is the overall average? Ah, ah, yes, yes, what is the overall? Overall average. In this case, we should find the overall average between sample A and B equals the average of the overall average of sample A and sample B. Close. is 3.06. There we have it. The average... Desire for softened toilet paper, to toilet paper at a slight premium price is 3.06, or neither likely nor unlikely. I should say 3.06. That's too close to 3. 3 on a 1, 2, 5 scale. So that's that last sentence is like trying to put this in a way that a manager or a boss or maybe your mother or father would understand. The average desire for softened toilet paper at a slight premium price is 3 on a 1 to 5 scale, or neither likely nor unlikely. That's what you learned. That's what you measured. Excellent. I'm going to insert a new sheet, move it over, 
next to softened toilet paper. And I want to repeat the exact same process with sample C and D. Copy, paste. We can go ahead and repeat this plot creation. I want to try copy and pasting all of it, see if I get the right thing. I didn't like that. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. We need to change this, so it's looking at D. And what is plotting for sample C is here. Okay, got an extra parenthesis. There we go. Let's call this C and let's call that D. Copy. Got to put the dollar signs where they all belong. Dollar, dollar. And let's create another plot. Insert column plot, simple 2D, and select my data. There's sample A, I'm sorry, C. So this is, you know, the researcher goes out and chooses another couple of samples or looks at the same set of data, but this time segregated along a different demographic variable. Perhaps the first one was done by uh, gender and the second one is done by age. I don't know. And there's my x-axis. And we have this data. It looks like C peaks early at the unlikely and then gets you know, very small. Whereas the D group is kind of flat. One might even say the D group is platycurtic. So let's go ahead and now look at our averages. Averages equals average of my C group. Notice I'm taking the average of the raw data, not of my aggregated data. And we see some difference, but it's pretty small still. 2.12, 2.92. It's not like it's huge. It's not a really big difference. Um, time to look at those p-values in the t-test again. So I'll move this over here. And I'm going to type in p-value of the t-test equals t-test of the first group, the second group, number of tails, I said choose two, number type, choose two for homoscedastic, close it up. Look at that, 0.02 or 2%. And what's our chosen alpha? Of course, it's 5%. So in this case, the P value of the T test is less than my chosen alpha, otherwise known as, well, it's not what I expected. It's definitely different. I'm going to have to reject the null hypothesis. I'm basically saying the differences are statistically significant. I'm basically saying that, well, C and D are from two different populations. C and D are from two different populations. The samples represent two different populations out there. Well, now this is good. Again, let's talk like we're talking to an executive. What does this imply? Well, the average, the average Uh, de desire for softened toilet, softened comma premium, because it's premium price, premium toilet paper among group C is 2.1 and among group D is 2.9, it's 2.1, and among group D is 2.9, what's 2.1 mean, comma, or unlikely, and among group D is 2.9, or neither likely nor unlikely, on a 1, 2, 5 scale. You've got to tell people what you're measuring. It's kind of got a little long. So I'm going to go ahead and take the second half of this and just put it down here in the next line. Now this last part, 
is how you would describe this to your boss. The average desire for softened toilet paper among group C is 2.1 or unlikely, and among group D is 2.9 or neither likely nor unlikely on a 1 to 5 scale. The beginning part of this is, well, there's my p-value of the t-test. There's my chosen alpha. This section right here, that is where we're trying to understand or interpret our data. And here's the key for the second half of the book. The first half, we've made these plots, and you became somewhat adept at plotting and basically managing Excel. That's good, necessary, but this course isn't really about showing you how Excel works. The real purpose of this course is showing you how to interpret data. And to interpret data, we're going to have to do these t-tests and other kinds of tests. We're going to have to do hypothesis testing like what we did here. And then we're finally going to have to wrap it up into a meaningful statement that you can give an executive. A meaningful statement that basically even your mother could understand. This is an example of how that can be done. At this point, you should be ready to do, in the end of Chapter 6, exercises on grocery targets, new training program, Atkins diet, graduates versus undergraduates, salaries, oil, job satisfaction. Good luck.